a long time, but I'm still here. Um, I, I have managed to do some, <laughs> some more. Uh, I'm into September, so these are, are some September uh, motifs, I guess is the word that I want, for the tatted temperature table runner scarf thing along. Um, I'm really impressed that I have made it this far. Like, I'm, I'm definitely at a yard, um, possibly more. And um, when this thing is fully blocked and stretched, uh, I may end up wearing it as a scarf because don't you think, I mean, or a shawl type thing. It's very pretty, right? And it's very colorful. It'll go with everything. It's like all the colors. Um, but anyway, I've only managed to tat, or yeah, tat through uh, September, um, oh, 13th. <laughs> I'm not even halfway through September and it's halfway through October. Um, yeah, so I am still following along. I have been writing it down, um, kind of when I remember to. And, um, if you recall way back at the start of this project in December, oh my gosh, uh, I did make sure that I put all of my colors on a little color sheet so that I could keep following along with my, um, temperature tat along. And I wouldn't forget which color number was what and, and what uh, temperature range it went with. And I do still absolutely adore the Olympus, like large or thick tatting thread. I forget what I called it on the website, um, but it's the big one. And it's, it's something more like an eight, not really a 10, it's thicker than that. But I also picked up this little beauty. So I have a friend, his name is John Abbey. He is a woodworker, he makes gorgeous bobbins for the bobbin lacers as well as um, bobbin holders and hair picks and all kinds of fun stuff. But this is his little thread holder. It's a cute little idea. Just like that. And you can put your thread on it. Now, do I need this? No. Did I want it? Yes. Um, <laughs> what does it do, you might ask? So if you think about when you're tatting uh, and you're winding your shuttle, a lot of times we're adding twist when we're doing that because there is a twist coming off of our ball of thread and a twist going around our uh, tatting shuttle. And those added extra twists can cause problems like twisted picots. Hmm. But with a thread holder, you can help eliminate some of that. It doesn't eliminate all of it unless you're making a concerted effort to like wind the shuttle versus winding the thread onto the shuttle. Hope that made sense. Uh, but there we go, cute little thread holder. Uh, and it's become very handy when I'm doing stretches where like I have to do the same color four days in a row. And so I can just, you know, and then I tat. And I do keep it attached to the ball. So I keep my thread attached to the ball to make my each of my little motifs here. So the chains are your ball thread and the rings are your shuttle thread, remember that. Um, so I have been using it when I'm doing that. And, um, and mostly I just think it's really cute. Um, I would definitely be using it for large projects where I was using the same color. It does have some drawbacks where if you have a really large ball of thread, it's probably not going to fit on there. Um, but for most of what I'm doing, eh, you know, it's cute and, and I can use it when I want to. <laughs> so sort of like a yarn bowl. I sometimes use them. Most of the time I don't. Um, but I still have a couple because they're pretty. And it was pretty. And, and usually I can't buy anything from John because, well, I could buy the fan sticks. But, you know, he, he makes bobbins for bobbin lace. I don't do bobbin lace. And this way I could support him and I could have a little piece that will always remind me of John. And yes, I did keep the little tag on it so that I, I don't forget that it's cedar. Um, although I may end up um, having him sign the bottom and just, you know, write it on the bottom there. Um, <clears throat> but I just, I really love, I love handwork things, clearly, because I do a lot of handwork myself. Um, so anyway, that is my... <laughs> It's my really sad check-in for my temperature tat along. Um, I'm sorry I've been gone so long from YouTube and TikTok um, and Facebook and like I just I got swamped I'm not gonna lie. Um, it's canning season it's heavy canning season and I'm trying to clean out the garden um, before I have some events at the end of the month and I've been trying to clean the cages in the rabbit barn so that the rabbits are all clean and happy for the winter um, because they're disgusting little creatures that, that make everything really gross like they did they just and fur and fur mats and, and we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> it's something I've just dealt with for almost 30 years. Um, but it's something that every year is a project that I, I, I complete. Um, anyway, so I'm down to, I have two cages left to wash before the end of the month. 
Um, and of course I'm doing other things too. I'm judging rabbit shows still. I am traveling to yarn festivals. I just did Lace Embrace Oklahoma not that long ago. Tina is going to be at Oregon Flock and Fiber, I think this weekend actually. Is it this weekend? Hmm, maybe it's the weekend after. I better look that up. Yikes! Uh, and then I will be at Ozark Fiber Fling in uh, Steelville, Missouri in November, just for two days. Um, and then I'm going to take a little bit of a step back because I don't like to travel as much, um, like most people, when it is just really cold and, and dreary and gross out. Um, so I don't know, I may end up trying to find, maybe I'll try to find like a sunny fiber festival down south where it's warmer, um, <laughs> but most likely. I will be doing some more online classes. Um, we're going to be transitioning to a new website, a new web system soon. Um, and you'll hear more about that in the coming weeks. Uh, yeah, and, and we're going to be doing lots of fun stuff. But I just, you know, throwing it out there, telling you kind of what's happening. This is my little check-in, as well as my lovely temperature tat-along show-off. Like, I'm working on it. I swear I'm working on it. We're not going to talk about the knitted blanket. <clears throat> I've kind of hit I've kind of hit an issue with the knitted blanket, so I'm going to do a video about that soon, and and I will talk about um, kind of where I got stuck and what happened and um, some thoughts for going forward. Um, but that'll be a whole other video. So I'm going to let you go for now. But I will say, uh, if you haven't checked out the website lately, I am adding in some new books. So I have this adorable little book that's tatting basic patterns by Rosemary Peel. It is a 2009 publication, but it's really cute. You don't see a lot of it over here because it is a lay skilled publication and they are in England. So we have to bring these books over. I'm also going to be um, listing a few of these guys. These are some used books. They're both Mary Conier books um, because I snagged a couple extras and I'm going to pass those on to the tatters um, that I can. And in addition to that, I have some bobbin lace books and things to show, but I'm gonna hold off on that. We're gonna do another video for that. Um, and, and so you'll see hopefully a series of videos coming up very, very soon. So thank you so much for sticking around, for subscribing to the channel, for telling your friends about us. It really helps. Um, please make sure that you are, you know, on our newsletter list. I'm sorry, you've signed up for the newsletter. Uh, make sure that you subscribed <laughs> to the YouTube channel, the TikTok channel, the Facebook page, and the Instagram um, channel, Instagram channel. Um, because we do post different things on all of those places, although they're all related. Um, and anyway, I hope that you will join me again very soon for another video. Um, and I'm going to be, I'm, I'm traveling. So um, if I have the opportunity, I will try to put a small video together of um, the ARBA convention, the Rabbit Readers Convention, where we all travel and go see each other and show our rabbits against each other. Um, I'm going to tell you that there's 13,000 rabbits and cavies, those are guinea pigs, um, entered. It's in Reno, Nevada this year. And that is actually a very small convention. So not the smallest we've ever had by any means. Not even the smallest in recent memory. Um, but that's a small convention. Usually uh, we expect anywhere from like 22 to 25,000 rabbits and guinea pigs, cavies, when we are um, going to that kind of show, um, our annual ARBA convention show in the Midwest. So next year it's in Louisville, Kentucky. And I anticipate um, a much, much bigger turnout for the ARBA convention than what we'll see this year. But that being said, I will attempt to take just a few little like videos and photos and try to share those with you because it is interesting. It's very interesting. So anyway, all right. Thank you for sticking around. Please remember to go um, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Facebook page, Instagram channel, TikTok channel, and the newsletter. And please take care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, and craftually, as I like to say. Um, try to get that 15 minutes of crafting in every day. I don't get that done every day. I just simply don't. So uh, it needs to be more of a priority right now that it's just 15 minutes, like 15 minutes, do a little tatting, do a little spinning, do something, do something that makes you happy. It's crafty. Um, anyway, I will see you guys next time. Thank you.